Today we're going to look at an alternative approach to switch statements. So this is actually a little bit more succinct, I think a little bit more easy and readable in JavaScript. So I want to hear what you guys think about this. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer with several software development years of experience. And if you guys are interested, I have a link to sign up for my mailing list and the links below and you actually get a free chapter of my book, Vue.js in action if you do. So let's begin. Here. All right, so I have here open the Visual Studio Code Editor. So I'll show you guys a quick example of how we can use something different than switch to do conditional statements. So if you guys are familiar with, with conditionals, let's say we have a an array of games here. So I have Apex Legends, Pokemon, Fortnite, and just Bly's, just a, a fourth game I just made up. So normally what we want to do is, um, I'm, for the sake of this demo purposes, I'm just going to loop through this games array and I'll show you how you would work with this in each conditional. So what this will do obviously is it'll go and loop through Legend, Pokemon, Fortnite, and blah, and through this loop right here. So normally when you do conditionals, if you just want to have one conditional and you don't really care that much, you can just do a simple if statement. And this works perfectly fine. So I can do if val, the value of this for each loop equals equals legend, then do something. So in this case, we'll just console log legends. And by the way, I'm using a plugin called Quoco, which makes it really cool when I'm doing demos just to see exactly what's happening here. Um, we can also do else ifs. So we have an if statement, else if, if the value equals Pokemon, then just console log poke, which is fine. And then if it's neither one of those, then we have a default statement. So you can see here, it would go through this loop, it would print out legends, it would print out pokey, and then it would print out default default. Now, obviously this isn't very, this isn't very succinct. There's a much better way to do this and that would be switch statements. Now it's okay if you have just one or two conditionals, but once you start to get into two, three, four, a switch statement is a lot more cleaner and actually, in browser tests, they've seen that switch statements are really quick too. So in that case, let's say we just have a switch statement. So we would switch val here, and this is val here. And then instead we would say case legend, and then we would console log legends. And then we have a break statement. Now the break is not, you don't actually don't have to have the break. What you can do is you can fall through the cases. So in this case, I have case legend, and then I have a default. So this is a little bit different. I didn't put the case for Pokemon, but you can see here that it printed out legends, and then it printed out test, test, test. Now, if I took this breakout, it would actually do both. It would it would fall through. And depending on your ES linter, you might get an error when you do this. Um, some you can actually I think set up the lint rules that you have to have brackets here or um, curly brackets. But of course. Um, in this simple demo, we don't need it, and it's really ne not necessary. So another, the the third way I want to show you the way you can do the different type of conditionals with and uh, remove switch statements is use an object. So uh, first, I'm just going to show you how to do this using functions, but we can use ES6 functions that make it make it a lot more sense. But let's just say we want to use functions right now. So I'm going to call it a constant called get game. It's going to be passed in a game as a parameter. And then inside there, I'm going to, um, inside this function, I'm going to have a const, it's a legend. And then what this is, this is going to be the same thing. It's a legend is the same thing what you're doing here in each one of these cases. So I have a case for legend. This one I had if for legend and Pokemon. So I'm going to say, if it's a legend, then return this as a legend. And then what I want to do is I can then cycle through that with games. So what this is saying is this is a games object. Legend is equaling to this, it's a legend here. If you don't have anything, then it defaults to this function, which returns unknown. So this unknown would be the same thing as default here where I put test. 
And then what I do is I have a return statement from this, this, uh, this named function here, get game, which is what it does is it returns, you pass in the game into it, and it basically takes the game's object. It, this is a, a parameter for it called game. So it'll return back whatever you enter into it. For example, legend would return, it's a legend. If it didn't recognize it, returned unknown. Now, if it doesn't exist, then it returns game.default, which returns unknown. So if I try that out with a console log with get game val, so what this is, every time this is going through the loop, it's passing in Plogen, Pokemon, Fortnite, and blah. Now it's going through and saying, okay, I, I came in here, here's the game. Uh, I'm gonna match it up here, so legend, 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 it's gonna return this as a legend. Then the next time it loops through, it, it goes to Pokemon, but Pokemon isn't in the games list here. And it's not, we didn't create a function for it, so it returns unknown, 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 unknown through the, the, three, the three last ones there. So you can see this is definitely a different way you can do switches. So let's say I wanted to add another one. So I'm gonna add in another one and I call it, it's a Pokemon. And then uh, this time I'm not going to use, uh, this time I'm not gonna use a function here. I'm just gonna use an ES6 arrow. So I can just do something like this. And I'm just gonna return, uh, this is Pokemon. And then I'm gonna have here called Pokemon. So I'm gonna make sure matches up what's called here. And this is gonna call, it's a Pokemon. And I'm gonna comma here. So now you can see I added in, this is a legend, this is a Pokemon, unknown, unknown. So you can see this is a little bit more verbose, but it makes a lot of sense. So let me show you the article here. So if we look at um, this article here, this is basically from this article I read and they suggest this is a more structured way of doing it. It scales better. It's easier to maintain. It's easier to test and it's safer. It has less side effects and risks. Since we're using objects, we'll be taking some temporal, temporal space and memory to store them. The space will be free thanks to the garbage collector when the scope is in which the object was gained is no longer accessible. Objects approach could be less than fast, which fast than switch statements when there are not many cases to evaluate. This could happen because we're creating a data structure and later accessing a key. So, so this article kind of talks about some of the things we mentioned here. So it's not as fast as the switch statement, but you can see it's definitely more succinct. You could easily uh, test this more easily. And by the way, if I want to switch this to an ES6 function, I could just do something like this. Um, which would do the same thing uh, instead of using uh, functions, name functions, I could do the same thing here. Something like that. I just prefer doing underscore too. That works as well. So, and then I'll change this too, just to be, okay. So now we're all using a six. I think the readability of this can be a little bit off-putting when you don't know what's happening. I've heard of people using this type of of these objects with these keys for for Redux on their React side. I don't know. I think it's pretty simple to understand. I could see how this could be really powerful. You could also, if you were having a, a pretty big project, you could import in each one of these functions yourself from different files. You can. Obviously you could do that from switch statements here, but I, th I think this makes a lot of sense. It, uh, and it works fine. Maybe it's not quite as quick as switch, but you know, I, I think this is an, a neat little pattern that you guys could try. You know, let me know in the comments below if this is something you would ever do. Um, and I'll, I'll leave a link to the Enma script article that talks about this. And, you know, let me know what you think about this style of a switch station, uh, switch statements and doing conditionals this way. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave a comment below, let me know. And uh, I appreciate it. By the way, just a quick shout out to Udemy. Udemy, Udemy has some amazing cheap $10 courses. I put links in the description below of some of my favorite courses. So if you're new to JavaScript, 
you know, check out some of those courses. You can get $10 courses, and if you buy any of them, I get a few bucks, so I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys, and take care.